At the edge of an ancient Lebanese quarry, a 1,000-ton colossus lies half-freed, its size eclipsing anything raised by Rome, its purpose still debated centuries later. This stone confronts us with scale and questions. New three-dimensional scans pierce legend and expose raw engineering. But even with fresh digital models, the stone of the pregnant woman resists every easy explanation. If science explains how, why do the most basic questions, who tried, why this scale, and what forced them to walk away, remain unresolved? Let's follow the digital evidence back to the source, where ambition tested physical possibility and created the world's most persistent megalithic mystery. From the hills above Lebanon's Bakar Valley, the quarry that birthed the stone of the pregnant woman overlooks a sweeping plain. Just 800 to 900 meters downhill, the Temple of Jupiter rises atop a platform that remains unmatched for its scale and ambition. The distance between quarry and podium is short enough to see with the naked eye. Yet the journey from raw bedrock to finished monument demanded an orchestration of labor and logistics that still challenges modern imagination. The Roman podium at Baalbek measures roughly 88 by 48 meters, its base layered with blocks so massive that the site is often described as a mountain built by human hands. The most famous of these, the three Trilithon stones, each stretch 19 meters in length, stand 4.2 meters high and weigh between 750 and 800 tons. Laid side by side in the western wall, they form a continuous band of limestone nearly 60 meters long, a feat that no other ancient civilization attempted at this scale. Beneath them, supporting courses of blocks span up to 11 meters and tip the scales at 350 tons each, distributing the incredible weight and locking the structure in place. These stones did not arrive by accident. The orientation of the quarry's extraction faces and the alignment of the blocks themselves reveal a deliberate supply chain. Each megalith was cut with its long axis matching the direction of the temple's foundation, minimizing the need for awkward turns or repositioning along the route. The slight elevation of the quarry above the temple gave the builders a crucial advantage, allowing gravity to assist in the movement of stones that would otherwise be nearly impossible to shift. Despite the absence of preserved roller ruts or carved tracks between quarry and podium, the topography suggests a gentle slope estimated at 3 to 5 percent, enough to favor sliding or rolling heavy loads toward the construction site. The logistics remain at the edge of what ancient engineers could plausibly achieve. Timber sledges, lubricated tracks, and teams working capstans and ropes could, in theory, coax such masses downhill, but the margin for error was razor thin. The successful placement of the trilithon blocks stands as institutional proof. Whatever methods were used, the Romans managed to move and install stones weighing as much as a fully loaded Boeing 747. The scale of the podium, with its layered courses and interlocking giants, transforms Baalbek from a mere collection of ruins into a statement of imperial power and technical mastery. It is not just the stones themselves, but the system that delivered them quarry, route, and platform, working together as a monumental machine. The evidence left in stone, from the precise fit of the trilithon to the orientation of the blocks, shows a process that was systematic, not improvisational. The podium's mass, exceeding 100,000 tons, anchors the site in both physical and historical terms, setting the standard by which all subsequent feats of megalithic construction are measured. In the shadow of the unfinished giants still lying in the quarry, the Roman podium at Baalbek stands as both a destination and a challenge, a finished product that proves what was possible and a reminder of the ambitions that pushed ancient builders to the very limits of their skill and technology. At the edge of the Baalbek quarry, ambition is frozen in limestone. The stone of the pregnant woman, weighing around a thousand tons, is only the opening act in a sequence of ever larger experiments. Nearby, the so-called Stone of the South stretches the limits even further, its mass estimated at 1,240 tons. Both blocks dwarf the already legendary stones installed in the temple podium below, but neither ever left the quarry. Then, in 2014, archaeologists uncovered something that redefined the scale of ancient risk-taking, the Forgotten Stone. Partially buried and hidden beneath spoil, this monolith measures nearly 20 meters long, 
6 meters wide, and 5.5 meters high. Its calculated weight, up to 1,650 tons, makes it the largest known quarried stone on the planet. The sequence is unmistakable. Each new block is bigger than the last, as if the quarry itself became a proving ground for the outer limits of human capability. The progression from the pregnant woman to the stone of the south, and finally to the forgotten stone, reads like a record of escalating ambition. These are not accidental leftovers or isolated stunts. Their alignment, orientation, and the methodical way in which they were separated from the bedrock suggest a systematic effort to push beyond what had already been achieved at the Temple of Jupiter. The numbers alone are hard to process. A thousand tons is already more than the weight of three Boeing 747s. The Forgotten Stone exceeds that by more than half again, challenging any straightforward explanation of purpose. No ancient text spells out why the quarrymen kept reaching for greater mass. There is no surviving manual, no inscription boasting of the feat. Instead, the stones themselves tell the story, each one a silent witness to an era when the scale of a project was both a technical challenge and a statement of intent. To move such blocks, even with the most generous estimates of manpower, tools, and time, strains the boundaries of what is physically possible. Yet the decision to attempt stones of this magnitude was made not once, but repeatedly. The quarry did not produce a single monster and then stop. It became a laboratory of extremes, a place where the limits of stone, muscle, and willpower were tested again and again. Whether this escalation reflects overconfidence, a lost tradition, or something that defies current understanding, the unfinished giants of Baalbek remain a testament to a drive that was as relentless as it was mysterious. Nowhere else in the ancient world does such a sequence of unfinished megaliths survive. Each block marks a step further into the unknown, an unanswered question chiseled into the hillside. The quarry's silent giants stand not only as monuments to the past, but as enduring puzzles, reminders that at Baalbek, the line between the possible and the impossible was not just approached, but crossed again and again. Stories about the stone of the pregnant woman have traveled through generations, woven into the daily lives of those who live in the Bakar Valley. Local tradition speaks of a woman, heavy with child, who promised to share the secret of moving the stone if the townspeople would feed her until her baby arrived. Some say she never revealed her knowledge, leaving the stone unmoved and the mystery unsolved. Others whisper that the stone's true movers were jinn, spirit beings from old tales, who shaped the monolith at the command of ancient kings, then vanished before the work was done. The stone's reputation as a source of fertility runs deep. Even today, women visit the quarry, brushing their hands along the weathered limestone in hope of conceiving a child. Newlyweds have been known to circle the giant block, believing that its presence can bless a marriage with children. Midwives once carried tiny offerings, pieces of bread, coins, or bits of cloth, leaving them near the stone as a silent plea for healthy births. These rituals have survived centuries of change, persisting through Ottoman rule, French mandate, and into modern Lebanon. The stories do not stop at the stone itself. Some villagers recall mothers warning their daughters not to walk alone near the quarry after sunset, lest they encounter the jinn said to linger among the abandoned giants. Others remember grandmothers telling how a woman who touched the stone would soon find herself expecting. The block, for all its mass and silence, is alive with meaning, a place where the boundaries between the physical and the magical blur. These legends do more than fill gaps in the historical record. They give the stone a place in the heart of the community, transforming it from a technical puzzle into a living presence. For those who grew up in its shadow, the stone of the pregnant woman is not just an engineering feat or a failed experiment. It is a guardian, a wish granter, and a reminder that some mysteries are meant to be touched, not solved. In 2014, a team from the German Archaeological Institute began a new kind of investigation at Baalbek's quarry. Instead of chisels and tape measures, they arrived with terrestrial laser scanners and high-resolution drones. Their goal was simple, 
capture every surface, edge, and contour of the site in digital form, down to the millimeter. Over several field seasons, surveyors set up ground control points using GNSS receivers, ensuring that each scan station could be precisely referenced in three-dimensional space. The scanners swept the quarry in slow, methodical arcs, firing millions of laser pulses per second. Each pulse bounced off stone, earth, or debris, returning a distance measurement that joined a growing cloud of data points. By the end of the campaign, the team had amassed point clouds containing tens of millions of coordinates, dense enough to resolve subtle tool marks, hairline cracks, and the full geometry of the pregnant woman's stone. Aerial photogrammetry added another layer of detail. Drones flew systematic grids over the quarry and its surroundings, capturing thousands of overlapping images from above. Specialized software stitched these photographs into orthophotos and generated additional three-dimensional models of the terrain. The combined result was a digital twin of the Baalbek quarry, accurate to within a centimeter and detailed enough to support forensic analysis. With these datasets, researchers could rotate, slice, and measure the stones virtually. The volume of each block, the angle of every undercut, and the precise slope from quarry to podium became measurable facts, not estimates. Mesh models revealed the subtle tilt engineered into the pregnant woman's stone, the alignment of extraction faces, and the spatial relationship between abandoned giants. For the first time, both mainstream archaeologists and alternative theorists could examine the same digital evidence. The site's mythology was now paired with data that left little room for guesswork. Baalbek's quarry, once a place of rumor and legend, had become a laboratory for digital archaeology, where every claim could be tested against millions of points of hard data. The stone of the pregnant woman is not simply a leftover block. Its anatomy reveals a precise plan for extraction and movement. High-resolution three-dimensional scans show that nearly the entire underside of the monolith has been carved free from the bedrock, leaving it perched on a narrow central ridge called the keel. The keel is not an accidental remnant. Its placement, running the length of the block, reflects an engineering decision to support the stone's enormous weight until the final moment, while allowing workers to finish the delicate process of undercutting without risking collapse. Along the sides, the stone's boundaries are sharply defined, with tool marks visible where laborers work methodically to detach it. The sides and base are so thoroughly separated from the quarry floor that only a thin strip of limestone remains to hold the block in place. This near-complete undercutting is a clear indication of intent. The builders were not shaping a monument in situ, they were preparing a 1,000-ton mass for transport. The scans also reveal a subtle but deliberate tilt engineered into the block. The upper surface is not perfectly level, but gently inclined toward one side. The angle appears calculated to allow the stone, once fully freed, to tip or slide in a controlled manner onto a prepared bed of timber rollers or a massive sledge. Such a maneuver would have required careful staging, with risk managed by keeping the keel intact until the very last phase. When the time came, a final series of cuts would have released the stone, letting gravity assist in lowering it onto the transport apparatus. The geometry of the undercut, the alignment of the keel, and the engineered tilt all point to a sophisticated extraction strategy. The stone was not abandoned halfway through a random process. Every cut, every angle, reflects the mindset of builders who intended to move a block of unprecedented size and weight. The evidence in the rock itself is unmistakable. This was a real engineering project, not a symbolic gesture or decorative carving. The quarry at Baalbek was a workshop of ambition, and the pregnant woman's stone was meant to travel. A longitudinal crack runs along the lower edge of the stone of the pregnant woman, a floor mapped in detail by the three-dimensional scans. Structural engineers reviewing the digital models point to this defect as the critical weakness. In limestone, even a hairline fracture can become a fatal fault when scaled to a thousand tons. The scans reveal that this crack follows the stone's long axis, 
precisely where the stress would concentrate during any attempt to haul or slide the block. If the stone were lifted or shifted unevenly, the force could propagate the fracture, risking a catastrophic split. The limestone here is not uniform, and zones of lower density and weathering amplify the danger. For a team tasked with moving the largest stone ever cut, this floor would have been impossible to ignore. The calculus was simple, proceed and risk shattering years of work, or walk away. The evidence in the rock itself speaks to a decision grounded in engineering caution, not superstition. Physics, not legend, sets the boundaries for what could have happened on the ground between the Baalbek quarry and the temple platform. The gentle, 3-5% slope over an 800-meter route offered a rare advantage. Gravity on their side, but not so steep as to risk a runaway disaster. Modern calculations, using the limestone's density and the block's measured volume, put the stone of the pregnant woman at about 1,000 tons. To move that mass, ancient engineers would have needed every trick – timber sledges, lubricated tracks, and teams working capstans and ropes in careful coordination. Even under optimal conditions, the resistance from friction and the sheer inertia of the stone demand a force at the edge of what human muscle and wood could produce. The Thunderstone in Russia, moved in the 18th century at 1,250 tons, proves such feats are possible, but only just. Baalbek's terrain and alignment show a plan that pushes human capability to its limit, never beyond, but never safe from failure. The story of Baalbek's stones is layered, both in limestone and in meaning. Mainstream archaeology points to Roman builders pushing engineering to the edge, testing what was possible, sometimes failing, but always within the realm of human effort. The three-dimensional scans settle some debates. They confirm the true size of each block, the orientation of the quarry's extraction faces, and the flaws that likely doomed the largest stones. Yet the scans do not settle the deeper questions. No measurement explains why the Romans, or those who came before, chose to work at such an extreme scale, or why a sequence of ever larger blocks was attempted despite mounting risk. The podium's foundation incorporates older layers, blurring the line between Roman ambition and earlier traditions. Some see a clear progression of trial and error. Others point to gaps in the record, missing inscriptions, unexplained choices, and the sudden halt in megalithic ambition as hints of lost knowledge or outside influence. Baalbek's stones remain both a technical achievement and a riddle, their motives still locked in the bedrock. For every answer technology brings to Baalbek, deeper questions emerge about the limits of human ambition and the origins of knowledge itself. Today, engineers still debate whether any modern team would risk moving a 1,000-ton stone. As new tools reveal old mysteries, Baalbek reminds us, even when the data is clear, the reason for wonder never really moves.